Greetings, honorable committee members and dear guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am David Mamian presenting my Capstone project now, multi-user and multi-access security system, with supervisor being Vagan Zargaryan and my advisor being Bilor Kurghinyan. This is the outline for the entire presentation. First, I'm going to discuss the goal and motivation, then describe the project, explain the system behavior, the system specifications, product design, results, demonstration, appreciation list, and plans for the future. So, we already know that our country is equipped with many, many electrical security systems. However, they are either with one input or two input. On a very rare occasions, they are free inputs. And the most popular ones and the most used ones are password-based security systems, RFID card-based security systems, and fingerprint-based security systems. But, however, the password-based ones are of only have one password. They are predetermined but unchangeable. This is how the objective of this project was created. The goal of this project is to create an accessible door lock security system with three inputs in total. So what's my project? It's a universally installable door lock security system which can be mounted on any doors, wherever you wish. It's simple to use and reasonably priced. It has biometric configuration capabilities, RFID access, and keypad availability. This is the system scope of my entire system. As it's large, we're going to go deeper for each part. It consists of three main parts, user mode, admin mode, and case of possible in in intrusions. The user mode is the main and the default mode of our system. It consists of password, it consists of RFID, it consists of fingerprint. However, they vary in the numbers of users. Password-based ones are for all of the users, and they have limited number of wrong attempts. In case of right attempt, the door is unlocked for a limited time. In case of wrong attempt, the system doesn't allow you to enter. In case of free wrong attempts, owner gets a notification by on his device. In case of fifth failure, owner gets a call. For RFID scanners, which are used for more common users, all you have to do is just to show this card or even this chip in front of the scanner and you'll get the access. But the fingerprint is VIP. It's only for the owner, the admin. Uh, after all, our fingerprint can only register one fingerprint. The admin mode. Admin mode is a VIP mode which allows the owner to change password in case if the owner wants to, in case if he forgot the old password. All what the admin must do is just to remember the admin password, enter it, identify the fingerprint in case of wrong identification, automatically back to user mode, then entering the new password and the password gets updated. This is the most important part, the alarm preventing case of intrusions. We made a decision that it's supposed to be by detecting an acceleration. In case of detecting an acceleration, an alarm for a limited time is going to trigger. This is my entire circuit diagram, and it consists of four major parts. Power supply, locking mechanism, their input sensors, and human-machine interface. Power supply is responsible for powering this entire block full of many components. There are different components powered by different amounts of voltages, mainly 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.7 to 4.2 volts, aka just one battery. For that, the decision has been made to use step-down models to ensure the connection and the power only from one direction. Next thing is that uh, not only just powering the circuit and regulating the voltage with BMS, we decided that we should also charge our product so that it could work at any times. So the adapter and socket serves as the charger for our batteries, and it works with the switch. The next important part is the locking mechanism. Lock is the most responsible and the most important component of our entire circuit, regulated by just one important component, MOSFET. Uh, diode is just put for providing a current path during the reverse recovery phase. It must prevent self-damage during the recovery. That's the only purpose of the service. The next are input sensors, the most ones. 
the keypad, we have the keypad, which is responsible for sending the data to the microcontroller. We have the RFID, which is responsible for checking the correct address of those chips or cards. We have the fingerprint, which is sending a signal to microcontroller to gain access. And then um, an option of unlocking the door from inside should also be, which is by a simple touch sensor. And an uh, accelerometer just contains data transmission movement measurements. These are not fine components. Obviously, the most important one is the display. It is responsible for the user to understand the system's behavior. Buzzer is for alarm. And the GSM module is responsible for notifying the owner on his device in, ca in, in different cases mentioned before. These are the component lists required for our project. Um, we need a microcontroller to program it, the SP32. We needed lithium ion free pieces of batteries so that it could uh, power the circuit properly. We need an RFID scanner. We need an OLED I2C display, a keypad for X4, the most desirable one and the best one an audio 5 voltage buzzer, GSM module, uh, accelerometer is the most popular one, MPU6050, GY521, aka just IMU. Fingerprint scanner is a rare component, it's not an ordinary Arduino fingerprint scanner, it's a printed circuit board ordered from abroad, uh, which has a relay, which has power, and which has this fingerprint, which is printed by ABS. By simply touching this fingerprint, the relay changes its place, the switch. We have the electromagnetic door lock responsible for gaining or, not or denying the access. Then we have adapter and socket for charging. This is the product design. My product consists, most importantly, of two separate blocks, the outer part and the inner part. The outer part is responsible for sensors and the display, while the inner part is responsible for the rest of the circuit and the holes required for connectors, even uh, USB for microcontroller, microcontroller in case if you want to change something, the hole for the socket, and that's it. Models are provided by SolidWorks CAD software. These are another important product designs for the lock and the batteries. So in this box are the batteries. They are being controlled by switch, which is uh, put here, and the lock, which is attached here. And another very important component is this little thing called door holder. It's responsible for just being attached to a door and ensuring that the lock is in its correct place and no one could ever open a door without doing the necessary steps. Models are provided by SolidWorks again. These are the drawings of uh, my products. Uh, these are the dimensions required for our blocks so that uh, the user would understand how large or how small they are the hole for the keypad, the holes for the display, and also the holes for the connections, and attachments as well. We have the drawing of the inside uh, block, which is nearly the same reason. The only difference is uh, that the only differences are the dimensions. As, the, as you can see from real life, the inner block is way larger than the in front block. It's responsible for keeping all the circuits inside. The drawings for our box case, from here you can see the box and case separately, but in the drawing you can see the box with their dimensions, the case alongside the hole for the switch, and the door holder. So these are the results of my work, a working 3D printed prototype, and the working circuit assembled on two split perf boards attached to the motors, which will also secure the connection. It will not allow any others to come and ruin something or change some connections by digging it into the circuit. And here is the video demonstration of my project. Let me turn it on. So here I input the correct password. We wait a couple of seconds unless the door is locked again. Then we scan it with an RFID card. We'll also do the chip as well. Next is the fingerprint for admin only. And the other one is the touch sensor from behind. Okay. 
and then I'm inputting a password for the admin mode, which will allow me to enter there, then it requires the scan. Whenever it scans, I'm only required to enter the new password or just any password which will be registered as a new password. After entering it, the password gets registered. And here is the notification on my phone, which is done by a GSM module. So right now I'm inputting wrong passwords on purpose, just to demonstrate to you the case of multiple failed wrong attempts. Here is our owner is already notified for the third wrong attempt. And then I'm inputting the fourth time wrong password on purpose. Meanwhile, the SMS sending process is happening with the GSM module. You already can see on my phone. And in case of fifth wrong attempt, the system gets locked and the phone gets rang, as you can see. Now I'm confirming that not only the circuit is powered by batteries, it is also charged. Oh, no, sorry, wrong one. I'm detecting an acceleration by just purpose hitting on a table on purpose so that the alarm would be on for 10 seconds. So the 220 volts AC is are connected, which is responsible for the charging. Sorry, two pages. Now, appreciation, appreciation list time. I would like to thank my friend, my supervisor, and my colleague, Valgnazar Garyan. I would like to thank my advisor and lecturer, Bilor Kurghinyan. I would like to thank my friend, my former senior, my current teaching associate, soon to be a former teaching associate, and my big brother in engineering, Alexander Hagopian. I would like to thank everyone who supported me during these rough times, my friends, my family. I love you. I love you all 3,000. And the plans for the future work. My project is still in the phase of a prototype, so it means it's not for sale yet, but I wanted to make it for sale. For doing so, we need to advance it more further, create more features for the notification system, Working on improving the user and the device relationship, replacing SIM cards such as with uh, prototypes such as eSIM, aka embedded SIM. The new phones are already working like that. Converting perf board based circuits to printed circuit boards, aka PCB. We already had a designed PCB, but it was too late for us to order. That's caused a lot of problems. Convert the 3D printed prototype to aluminum blocks. Of course, nobody would buy a 3D printed model and dig a big hole like this for just connecting both the sides. Add a waterproof connector for all the outputs, solves the connector issue. Add a kill hole in the device for emergency situations. Battery has a limit in working, and in case of absence in electricity, it can work five to 10 hours. If suddenly uh, people are left with no choice, at least they could insert the key for that. Insert the battery sockets on the printed circuit boards and remove the battery box. Yes, if we are making a PCB, we definitely need to integrate the socket in the PCB. Then add the camera for the owner to see who is in front of the door. If we get notified, we still don't know who is in front of the door. This is how we find out. Thank you very much. I love you all 3,000. Just curious why three lithium ion big batteries? Have you measured that any options to reduce the power consumption so that it can work with a small one battery, let's say? Um, what is the most consumpting piece in your design? And um, so you said that you have uh, different options for the authentication, like the keypad and then the fingerboard, right, the, for fingerprint, and um, th there's one more, an, an RFID, right? Yes. And so 
from what I have understand so far, these are designed for different purposes. So if you have already the fingerprint, so you have the code and the functionality, why don't you let the regular users also use the fingerprints and you're just limiting admins to use the fingerprint. I mean, if, you, if it is already there, uh, you should have more flexibility, like everyone, including the admin, can use the RFID with their specially designed RF keys, or the regular users also can use more than one fingerprint, not only admins, so these kind of flexibilities could be more beneficial to take into account. And I think that that shouldn't be uh, very time consuming to um, to develop. Sure, it's definitely not time consuming. Too many questions though. I'm going to start with the consumption rate. Overall circuit has 310 milliampere per hour power consumption. The most actively working components in my circuit are the microcontroller and the display as it's always on and it's always written a text here and the log but it is strictly strictly dependent dependent on how frequent the lock is used for unlocking or just locking the door. Uh, about the next question that uh, why don't I add uh, availability for the components, uh, this project is for any doors including even the most private rooms which isn't desirable for everyone to enter except people who had something to do with it and the director is the main one, he can also be doing some stuff in private so that no one would ever see. That's why I limited the fingerprint access for only one person and also the password changing option includes a fingerprint so that others except the admin wouldn't try to change password and then the admin would technically let's say would be changed like that if the, there was only one fingerprint. Let's just say in short the first person who touches the scanner as soon as the system is on and the fingerprint start registering that guy is the owner. <laughs> RFID scanners could be for more common users, family members or just employees of the office. Now password based are just for everyone. I thought that only password is just enough for everyone to solve that issue of many users. Thank you for the questions. Uh, very well done. Thank you. And uh, especially the quality of the prototype. Everything is working, we have seen. Uh, but I haven't seen anything about uh, the encrypting the password or the fingerprint or the uh, other information, identification information. Uh, this represents a big risk if someone, the uh, device is tampered um, on the owner's absence. It can be uh, opened and, uh, you know, exploited when the owner is not informed about it. So how, how you're going to future improve? I've seen the improvement plans, but haven't seen the uh, information security or, or cyber security bit of it. Sure, I've... Right. I still thought that my system is safe, but not the safest. And I will make sure to improve that part of the safety as well, thing, especially when it comes to the admin recognition. Because it seems like even biometric security systems can be yeah. like copied by somebody else, like mm -hmm. stolen. This point I will take into very deep consideration. Okay. Thank you.